Welcome to the channel. This is Oblivion and we are here with a Mythic Arvo Summoning Session. Now you may have noticed I have a ton of orbs and I do plan to go pretty deep into this banner. My main goal is I want to get one Arvo, two Atries so I can finish her and get her to plus 10, and then as many Asker and Elemi merges as possible. This means for me, the main priority is going to be colorless with green secondary, then I'll do red, then blue. I might possibly spark for Atreus just so that I can stop summoning on green because I honestly do not like the summoning share at all. Uh, I do not really care for Letizia very much and I think Odor's okay, but I already have one of them so I really don't need any more copies. If you want to hear more about my first impressions on Arvel or my in-depth analysis, I have a video link in the description down below. But for this video, we're pretty much going to just talk about a few things and we're going to jump into some questions. So let's go ahead and get started. So we did get oh, not a single colorless on the first pool. <laughs> oh my god, that's not a good sign. Okay, let's just do the green and get out of here. Uh, so they did go with like the middling speed, middling defense stat line for Ar Arvel. I'm not the biggest fan. I kind of wish they would have went with either speed or defense. Uh, the way it is, you kind of can speed stack Arvel, but you're going to have to invest quite a bit. And you really can't change out their A slot. So you're going to have to do it in like their B slot or their C slot and then their seal as well. And then you can go bulky, but... I don't think it's, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what stat line ends up working the best and what kind of build as well. That's going to be something that like really stacks up the resistance to make sure that you can hit that. Oh my God, yes! That is an amazing way to start the summoning session. Oh my God. So we already got our armor. So we don't really need to worry about them anymore. Let's see if they have good IV. <laughs> it might be terrible. Plus attack minus resistance, that's definitely not the best. We definitely want the resistance stat to be good. Um, hopefully we can get one more and then we don't have to worry about that. But at least we don't have to spark them now. We can possibly spark a tree here. Uh, but yeah, so I kind of wish, I'm not sure what kind of build they're going to go. They're going to go for a really heavy resistance build so they can ensure get that guard uh, ploy off or if they're going to go for more of a damaging build. Personally, I really want to try AoE. The fact that you can stack true damage through their AoE is really strong. We've seen this with like um, Bridal Lalina, right? And Bridal Lalina hits really hard. The only thing really wrong with Bridal Lalina is that she does have hardy bearing, like Legendary Lalina, Lalina which does hold her back a little bit. But even so, she's an amazing unit. Uh, other than that, there wasn't really much in the update to talk about. I am interested to see how everybody uses Arvel, and I do think people are kind of underestimating them a bit. I do think they actually are better than than people are considering. Uh, I think that it's just gonna be very annoying to get hit by that defense boy, especially on tanks and on when you're trying to gale force, right? Now there are ways obviously to play around that, but even so having to play around it is gonna be annoying. Okay, so let's back out here. So I don't really have much else to talk about other than that. I guess we can just start with all the questions because there's a lot of questions to answer. Let's start off with some of the older ones and then we'll get to some of the newer ones I got today. So this person's gonna be from Reed Skull. They want to know how would you rank Har and Delthea, so this is Fallen Delthea, on this list post refined. So it's, it's kind of hard to say exactly. I haven't got a chance to really play with Fallen Delthea all that much, though I have played with Har quite a bit because Har is one of my favorite characters. Uh, I think I'd put Fallen Delthea in like either A tier or maybe like the bottom of S tier, uh, somewhere around there probably. I think if we can get a new special for mages that actually. Uh, let's them like get through some of the like magic and stuff or just hit harder even I think that she could probably make better use of that right like that would probably help her a ton But as she is now she her teleporting is very nice and she does do good damage But like she doesn't do enough really to get through hardy fighters. So I'd probably put her in, like a tier uh, For har I think hey female shot is nice uh, for Har, if I try to put my bias aside, which is really hard because Har is one of my favorite characters I think he's probably like an uh, an S tier character, I'd say. Uh, his his dual phase brave, his true defense damage reduction is really strong, uh, and the guard too, right? Like it's a really powerful set of abilities. But if I don't put my bias aside, I put him in double S tier because <laughs> I think he's just really really cool. Like I've been having so much fun with him. He can do a lot of cool builds. He can really take advantage like advantage builds. Um, if you use them with like something like Brave Lucina, then you can like use two cooldown specials and then he can just smack people with them. I've also just been kind of like memeing really hard with him. And I went like a full speed build, like fully invested in the speed so he can do quad har. And that is a ton of fun. Like I've been having a blast with that. I meant to make a video on it, but I just never got around to it. So maybe I'll do that in the future. But 
yeah, so Har would probably, realistically, probably S tier. Uh, in my heart, double S tier for sure. Well, in my heart, he's like quadruple S tier. Okay, so let's move on to another question. We got this one from Loopy Source. What are some units you used to use all the time when you were first starting out in Fae that have completely fallen off at this point? Hey, Atlas too. We're getting some actually good four stars here. Uh, I don't know if I'd actually build Atlas or female Shaz, but maybe. Defense, okay. I wish we got some more colorless stuff. Okay, um, so let's see, falling off at this point. So originally, like a lot of my characters I used were like Shershi, Reinhardt, uh, Lucina, like base Lucina, stuff like that. And I think they're still pretty decent, actually. If I had to think of one unit who's really fallen off lately, it would probably be Brave Lynn. Uh, she just does not have the damage she once used to have, right? Like, Brave Lynn used to be like the dominant meta force, right? Especially in year one and year two. And then after that, when her damage already started to fall off, you switch to like that Fire Sweep build, right? You go on the Fire Sweep bow, and then you have Double Poison Strike, and she was still really useful as that as well. And that's what I would kind of use her at. Uh, but now that's fallen off because of Ascended Fjorm, right? So now she's just kind of useless to me, if I'm being completely honest, which sucks, because, you know, I have her at plus 10. She's, oh, almost messed up. She's one of my favorite uh, bow units in the game. And so I think if I had to choose one, I think it's probably her that's fallen off the hardest recently. Uh, maybe a rearmed bow, right? An arcane bow would kind of fix that, and we could make her come back to relevance a bit. Uh, I think that would be really cool, but I don't I don't know if that's ever gonna happen. Another really cool thing could be like if they they ever did CYL remixes. I highly doubt they would, but like if they could give uh, Lost Decay like a, an upgrade, that would be really really cool. And her weapon. Hey, let's go! Oh my god, this is going so well. This is going so well, guys. Oh my gosh, let's go. Thank you so much for the lucky questions. Okay, so we have one A tree. So if we spark A tree, plus attack. I think she's already plus attack. I think I'm gonna actually go plus speed in attack with like maybe a floret. And then like speed stacker, because she's really good with speed stacking. Uh, but yeah, so I, I think that's what I would go with. Hopefully we can get a nice bow for Lin for my arcane weapon, and then I can build her up and use her again. Okay, let's do another question. Uh, this, oh my god. I mean, I don't want odor, but I'm not gonna complain after just getting an atri, right? That's like pretty much a free five star. That's amazing. Let's go. He has decent fodder, right? Like, I don't think G Dual Cav 4 is like even <laughs> very good anymore, right? When you think about it, it only gives you like 175 on legendaries and 180 on not, which is like not even good enough anymore to stay in tier 21, which is just ridiculous, right? So mostly you'd be like sacrificing for flow rush three or flow refresh three and attack defense menace which is like okay fodder uh not the best in my opinion but not not terrible let's see if we can keep the luck going okay so this next question is gonna be from sherwin elazar and they want to know which seasonal hero would you like to appear in the future so the one seasonal unit i really 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 want is i wanted a pirate duo racin i wanted it so bad but um you know, as we've seen, they've seemed to remove the pirate banner this year, which is ultra disappointing. That was the one banner I, like the, probably my favorite seasonal banner ever. And so to see it go so quickly has made me very unhappy, to be honest. Okay, there's Innis. That's kind of cool. That's not bad. Uh, but yeah, so with no pirate banner, I guess I will just take like any duo summer, like duo racing. I guess I could, like summer could be okay or something like that. Um... Do I want to do this blue? I, I don't even remember who is on blue. We'll, we'll do the blue because it's three orbs. We already broke our pity anyway. But yeah, so like any type of like duo racing, I'd be very happy with. Especially if they have a really cool like duo skill dance. That would be amazing. Hey, there's Reinhardt. But I don't really expect that. Like if we ever got a Tellius dance, like that would probably break the game. So kind of probably for the health of the game, it's probably not good for that to ever happen. Okay, so let's go to the next question. This one's going to be from God of Nil. Would you ever consider making more Genshin videos periodically, unit meta analysis, guide, team comps, goofing off, etc.? Um, I actually have been thinking about it a lot. I did some outlines for some videos, but I never actually recorded them. But I have wanted to make Genshin content. I just don't know how well it would actually do on my channel. Uh, so the, the option I've been thinking about is making a second channel for Genshin content. And then that way it doesn't like destroy the algorithm for my, my fave videos. But that is a lot of work, so I'm, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to do that yet. But I, I really do want to make some Genshin videos. I think Genshin's like a really great game, and I think that um, I just have a ton of fun with it, right? And I would love to make videos on it. I don't think I would ever do like meta 
analysis in Genshin, because I don't think the meta matters in Genshin, if I'm being completely honest. Um, the end game is ridiculously easy, right? If you've, if you've gotten there, like, you can easily uh, 36 star the Abyss, like, no problem with, like, super under-optimal units or team compositions. So, I'm not too interested in the meta that much, as much as I would want to do, like, maybe theory crafting videos, like, how you could introduce raids into Genshin, or how you could, like, do balancing in Genshin, like, maybe change some of the elements a bit, um, create new reactions, stuff like that. Like, I would, I would want to do, like, more creative stuff when it came to Genshin videos, and then also, like, summoning and, like, goofing off videos where I just kind of mess around and have some fun. Uh, if you're interested in that, make sure to drop a comment down below so I can kind of gauge how many people would actually want to watch that content. Because most likely I'd have to try to like capture a new audience for it, which is definitely not easy. Like building up an audience uh, is difficult, especially in Fae, I'd say, because the, the, the population is so much smaller, right? Like if you compare the amount of people playing Fire Emblem Heroes to Genshin, it's, it's, a, it's a big difference. But even so, trying to find any type of audience can be very difficult on YouTube. Okay. Uh, I guess we keep doing Grinch, right? Like, because I could get Atri here. I'm not sure if I want to spark Atri or not. She does come back in, I think it's February, and she has like Xander Thor. Ugh. Ugh. Like, it's. Uh, like, I don't have that much pity, so it's not that bad, but like, that could have been Atri, and I could have been done. I. I Odor. The, the first one was okay. This one, I'm like, what you doing, bro? Why are you here? Okay. But yeah, she comes back in February with, like, I think Legendary Xander. Oh, this is a really good circle. Um, Thor and then Atri, right? So that's, like, actually a pretty solid share. I don't really want Xander, but, like, getting merges on Thor to finish her at plus 10 would be really cool while finishing Atri. The problem is, like, you have to wait, right, until February, which is, like, four months, more than four months. So I don't know if I want to wait that long. Maybe. I'm not sure yet. I'm, I'm trying to think of it through before I get to the spark, but I'm getting closer and closer. Oh my god, we were having such a good start to this summoning session. This is amazing. Uh, so the last time I summoned for Asker on his premiere banner, like, he just would not come home. The only one I got was from the Spark. And uh, I didn't get any more with, like, 500 orbs. So I'm very glad to finally get a merge on Asker. Asker is a phenomenal unit. One of the best units in the game, in my opinion. He's really great in uh, Aether Raids, obviously. And then the place I use him more is in Summoner Duels, where, like... He's just phenomenal. He's like one of those units who could just bring a team together. He offers that special cooldown that lets you just really create really powerful offensive threats. And he also acts as an amazing frontliner, which is just really invaluable in some duels. It's like one of the things you absolutely need on your team in like almost every situation, right? There's George, one of my least favorite characters. Uh, if you've never heard my George pity breaks story, um, he pretty much broke my 7.25% pretty on the first CYO when I was going for Brave Lin. And I've, uh, I've hated him ever since. <laughs> so I wasn't very happy to see him get a resplendent, even though I'm sure all the other fans were very happy. Okay, so let's go to the next question. This one's going to be from Crosshair. Uh, out of the Genealogy cast, who do you like the most? So I haven't played Genealogy. It's one of the few games I haven't played. Uh, I've been waiting for the remake, and so I've kind of like been keep pushing it off because I don't want to like... I know that it will be very different, right? Obviously the base game will be very, very different than the remake. But even so, I kind of wanted to experience it first through the remake. But seeing how it's being... I don't know if it's been delayed or what's going on, because I'm pretty sure it's been like in the works for a while. I just haven't gotten around to it, I guess. I should just probably play it. But from, um, from Fire Emblem Heroes... Oh, let's go! Oh my god, our luck is supreme. Let's go. So we have a plus one armor now. I could technically fodder, but I don't think I would. Plus speed. Could that ever be good? I don't know if that's ever good. So we're doing really, really well so far. Wow. Uh, but yeah, so from like Hearsay and from Fire Emblem Heroes, my favorite character I would say in genealogy is Nana. Um, I know Nana, Nana kind of cheats because she counts as genealogy and Thrasha, but even so, I just love Nana. Like, Nana is my plus 10 healer that I care about the most. She has put in the most work on my Aether Raids defense team. She's just been phenomenal in every single way. And then we got Legendary Nana, and Legendary Nana is really good as well. Uh, I just really enjoy her personality, and like, everything about her is really cool. Let's 
Holy shit, our luck is so fucking good. Wow, our luck is fucking insane. Let's go. Okay, so we don't even have to spark for a tree now. What? This is so good. Oh my gosh. I don't even know how many five stars I've pulled now. This is insane. This is such a good summoning session. Holy crap. I'm kind of scared to use all 500 orbs because I feel like my luck's going to like run out. Wow. Holy crap. There's a Karen. But yeah, Nana is definitely my favorite. So I don't I don't know if that's cheating, <laughs> but that's, that's definitely my favorite. I, I like Sigurd as well. He comes off as a character who seems kind of just like my type of character where he's kind of badass, but he's also like, you know, pretty noble and heroic at times too. So I'm sure that when I do eventually play Genealogy, I will love Sigurd a lot, but I just haven't had the chance to play it yet. Okay, let's jump into the next question. This one's going to be from Padma1. Uh, is there any way intelligence systems can fight complexity creep or are we doomed to more and more text and math until playing Fire Emblem Heroes is like landing a Kerbal on the Mun? Um, unfortunately, I think we are past the point where we could kind of stop the complexity creep. We've kind of gone like full force into it, right? There are just so many minute differences within descriptions of skills and how they work and the a million abilities that are attached to them right so i don't think there's any way to really stop complexity creep at this point uh maybe you could slow it down a little bit but i don't think there's any way to like completely stop it, it from just going crazy right i think the best thing they can do at this point is to first of all make keywords right like no follow-up keyword dagger seven uh keyword um canto whatever right and then if they could have a way so you could click on it and when you clicked on it, it expanded with the description. That would be really, really, really good. Um, the other thing is if they used tactic drills to teach you about skills so that people had a way to understand skills um, before they actually got to the unit, right? So when you start to read a character, like, okay, these are all bad examples. <laughs> let's go to, uh, let's see right here. Like, let's say we go to Asker, right? And we look at his weapon. It has all this text. If they could just teach people that, like, tempo is a keyword they could just put tempo here right instead of all this text and it would make it so much easier to understand and would help people a ton so i hope that's what they the, the kind of direction they go with okay so we're at our spark already and the question is who do we spark who do we spark so we don't need to spark a tree i don't think we need to spark arvel right so it's either elamine or asker okay so i checked the calendar for the next upcoming event right and Elamine is back in February, and she shares with Ashera and Ash, which I really like that that share, right? Not everybody's going to love that, but I love Ashera. I love Ash. So I probably will summon pretty heavily there. While Asker comes back in March, and he shares with uh, Legendary Corn and Mila. I don't mind Mila so much, but Legendary Corn I definitely just don't want more copies of. So I'm going to go for Asker here, because I probably won't summon on his next uh next rerun essentially right well i will summon on elamines so like I, th I think i'll go with asker and try to get some merges here there he is i love asker so much i'm very sad spoilers spoilers for the story if you care about the fire Emblem Heroes story if you haven't played it yet but um i'm very sad that asker died so quickly like i don't think there was a need to do that he was such a great character like why why kill him off immediately? Okay, so we have our two A-trees. We don't need any more green units. I have no interest in Odor or Letizia or even extra A-trees. So let's do red. Uh, maybe we can get Plumeria. A Plumeria merge would be very nice. And a Mirabilis merge is like kind of okay. So I, I don't really mind. And then if Lith, Lith has like time school. So it's not even the worst, right? So we'll be doing like colorless, then red, then blue, then green now. Green will be our last priority. Okay. Uh, so let's do our next question. This one's going to be from Virian Wind. Uh, this one is to the unspoken evil three to four star units that you want but never show up. What three to four star normal summoning pool unit that you want to get to plus 10 took the longest because they wouldn't come? Mine is Legault. I say is because I've been playing since 2019 and I've been getting him to plus 10. He's at plus seven and I've only gotten eight copies. Holy crap. Wow. That's kind of insane that... Legault's like one of the older four stars. You'd think you'd have him at plus 10 now. Wow. Um, for me, I don't really have that problem all that much because I am a whale, so I'm summoning all... Okay, I'll take a Mirabilis. Why not? Sure. That's cool. I don't think we had that much pity either, right? Yeah, not really. That's that's completely fine. We'll back out here. Go back in. Uh, see, I don't really have that problem because I'm a whale, uh, but I will say that 
when Ross and Tethys came out. Roth, Ross is one of my favorite characters like in all of Fire Emblem, so I wanted to plus 10 them as quickly as possible. And I think it took me like four or five months, which is pretty bad when you're like summoning as much as I do. So I had pretty bad luck with Ross. But other than that, I would say there really hasn't been that many characters that I've struggled to get a lot of copies of. Not that I can think of, at least. So yeah, hopefully that... Oh, there's Tethys again. <laughs> she heard me talking about her. Okay, so let's do the next question. This one's going to be from Keo. Keo wants to know, what was the inspiration of your channel banner and icon? We're not getting any colorless. Let's do red. Um, so the my, my original character who's on the banner and the icon is the Oblivion Knight, right? What the channel's named after. And uh, it's a fictional character from my the world I created, the world and story I created. Uh, if you haven't heard me talk about it before, I, I do like Dungeon Master and Game Master for like a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. It's not actually Dungeons and Dragons, but it's like a tabletop game, right? And I've been doing that since like uh, 2014, I think. Yeah, I think it's about 2014, so like seven, eight years. And uh, the game we play is actually one I created. So I, I created the entire system. I created the like the world for the most part, like all the enemies, everything. I balanced it. I created everything myself. Uh, it, it was really difficult because I didn't have any experience before when I started. But I also just created my own world as well. And um, so when it comes to my original character, like he is one of my favorite characters in that world that I created. And he's very like lore important. So like when I had the idea of like, okay, who's going to be on my banner? Who's going to be my icon? That was like one of the first people I thought of. So yeah, hopefully that explains it. <laughs> it I can't really go into depth because there's so much there. But I, I do like writing a lot and I do like story creation a lot. So that's kind of like one of the ways I can do that is through tabletop gaming. And another way is just writing, right? Like writing stories itself. There's Norn. Okay, let's do the next one. This one's going to be from Slayerbot. Favorite mode event, least liked mode event. Uh, favorite weapon refine, who would you first plus 10 if you restarted today? Outside of Fire Emblem Heroes or any gaming in general, what do you do? School, study, work, any sports training of sorts. Okay, um, my favorite mode and event is Ether Rates, probably, I'd say. I think that's like the most competitive game mode where I feel like the most satisfied. Summoner Duels can like really give you that like heart attack, like high stress, <laughs> like a sense of achievement of winning, but like I feel like the meta changes so much, it like it feels bad to like build teams essentially like you never feel like you're like really investing into a team or like you're slowly building it up you just feel like you're like changing your team every two weeks which kind of sucks in my opinion so I, I would say ether raids probably when it comes to events i love grand conquest a lot it's essentially like the only game over you get to use like a large portion of your barracks and like i really feel like that's one of the things that this game doesn't do well on is like you summon so many characters in this game even if you're free to play let's go it's elamine yes awesome that's a great, great pool. I'm loving the pools today. These are amazing. Plus speed, okay. Like, we're definitely gonna want merges on Elamine with Arvo's resistance stat being so solid. But yeah, so I feel like Faye doesn't like do good making you use your barracks because even as free to play, you're, you're getting like 300 orbs a month. You're probably, you know, getting, I don't know, like 10 to 20 characters at least, probably a month. Now, how many are you actually using? Probably not that many, but even so, you're getting like new characters off banners and stuff. And the problem is, like, you don't really have all that many places to use them, right? There's essentially, like, Aether Raids, there's, like, Summoner Duels, and then there's, like, the story, which doesn't really matter because you can use anything and you will succeed in the story because it's so easy, right? So I, I do love Grand Conquest just for giving me a reason to use other units and other movement types, right? And, like, build up different brigades. So I definitely enjoyed that a lot. Um, when it comes to like least liked modes or events, I think my least favorite mode is like frontline phalanx or something like that, where like I feel like I'm just not doing anything. Like I, I don't understand. There's no gameplay, right? So I just feel like there's no point in even doing it. Like you just click it to get the rewards and then you leave. So that's probably my least favorite. Uh, favorite weapon refine. Oh, that's a hard one. I think like you could say brave hector just because it's powerful, but honestly, it's not my favorite refine. I would say probably like brave alm. Because Brave Alm was kind of like unusable before his refine. And then after he became like a really powerful, cool, fun unit. So he went from like essentially like me never wanting to touch him ever to like becoming one of my like favorite units. So yeah, I'll go with Brave Alm. 
A legendary Alm also has a really cool refine, and Nysala. Nysala's refine is really fun too, so those are definitely some of my favorites. And then, who would you first plus 10 if you restarted today? Um, it would be Legendary Ike. Legendary Ike is my favorite character, my favorite unit in the entire game. Uh, it hasn't changed since I pulled him. Uh, not at all. He's still my favorite. I love him absolutely. I give him everything he possibly can want, <laughs> even if it's not the best on him. And even nowadays where he's not the, you know, he's not an all-star unit like he once was, I would still plus 10 him immediately because it's Ike, and that's my favorite version of Ike. So yeah, that's definitely who I would pick. Ugh, I guess we do blue. Uh, outside of Faye, uh, yeah, I do a lot of gaming. I do a lot of reading. I, I, I love reading. I've been reading a lot of um, books lately. I've been reading, I've been rereading A Song of Ice and Fire, which is a very long book series. I think each book is somewhere close to 1,000 to 1,300 pages. So I've been rereading those. I've been reading reading the history books for those. Um, I've also just, yeah, so I've, I've mostly just been reading a lot, I guess, is the thing, the major thing I've been doing outside of gaming and like work, right? So like, it's like pretty much gaming, work, YouTube, <laughs> like all the time. Uh, no sleeping, just lots of, lots of, uh, YouTube and stuff. Hopefully that that's a enough to answer your question. I don't really want to get too much into details of like exactly what I do. I don't really want to like accidentally like dox myself. Um, so let's do this next question. This is going to be from Quinn Eshlin. What's your opinion on lazy alts? As in they are the same unit, but just with an updated kit, etc. I hate them. I hate them so much. <laughs> like uh, I think one of the big examples of this, right, is Ike. Ike is a very like a character who gets very lazy alts, right? We had like base Ike and we had brave Ike. Those were awesome. We get legendary Ike. Legendary Ike is pretty much the same as base Ike. You know, he gets radiant ether, which is cool. But other than that, there's not really much, right? Very small difference in stat line. Then we get fallen Ike. He's still a red sword infantry. His weapon does work a little bit differently, but even so, it's very, very similar. Then we get do Ike. Same thing, right? Another red sword infantry. I guess we got Valentine's Ike, who was an armor <laughs> red sword, but I really just don't enjoy that. I would really prefer if they like got more um, creative with alts, and instead of spamming us with like the same weapon types or like similar like roles, I wish they would do separate, different roles, different weapon types, and like really made it so that you could like create a cool emblem of the character, right? And there are characters like that who do get that kind of treatment, but like many do not right like even edelgard for the longest time was suffering from just like green axe syndrome and like dimitri with you know blue lance syndrome so i wish i would move away from that as much as possible like let us have some more unique alts i would really enjoy that all right so we're about halfway through actually we're more than halfway through we did pretty well so far i don't know if i actually like <laughs> i'm just summoning but i don't actually know if i need to keep summoning we got two asker one elamine we got two Arvels, two Atrix. We've got all the things we actually wanted. Actually, I should probably be stopping now that I actually think about it. But I'll go a little bit longer. I think I'll go at least to like one more five star. Okay, so our next question is going to be from Satachi, who is a fellow FayTuber. They have great content. They do a lot of Edelgard content. So if you're interested in seeing um, some very merged... Let's go! Yes! Another merge on Asker. I kind of want to keep going now because... <laughs> On Asker. <laughs> oh, I love Asker so much. Asker is amazing. So now, what's he at? Plus three or plus two? Plus three? I don't know. Oh, don't want to keep going. Don't want to keep going. I've been having such good luck. I kind of want to keep going, but then I feel like my luck's going to turn and I'm going to be mad at myself. I'm going to go for a little bit longer, which is probably a bad idea, but whatever. Let's keep going. Anyway, so yeah, Satachi does great Edelgard clears. Go check them out. So their question is going to be. Hey Oblivion, sending all my luck to you and wish you the best. I have definitely received the luck, thank you very much. Uh, my question is, what are your thoughts on Three Houses Lords getting Ascended Alts? Do you think it will happen sooner rather than later, or do you think it will be a long while, and what hopes do you have for them? Also, I like at all. Um, personally, I do think it's an inevitability, like it's going to happen eventually. Um, do I ha think it will happen soon? I think it will be at least a year maybe two i'm hoping more for two year if i'm being completely honest i think that like the three houses lords have gotten so much love it's kind of insane and i think that it would be nice if they kind of showed some of the love to some other characters right even if they are three houses how you know even if they are like other three houses characters like you know 
cough Felix. Like, where the hell's Felix? <laughs> Give me Felix. I would really, really like an Ascended Felix. But yeah, um, I eventually do think they will come out. And I think, because, you know, it's just free money. And there's no way Intelligence Systems passes out or passes by free money. I just don't see it happening. So it's only a matter of time, in my opinion. Uh, when it comes to virgins I would want, I would just want something unique. So I would want like Mage Edelgard or like Dagger Dimitri or Axe Claude. Like give me unique weapons. Uh, even different preference skills would be really cool. One of the cool things about Dimitri is that he, you know, he has atrocity, but he also has a uh, murderous line on his fallen art or fallen alt, I should say. So I would, wouldn't mind if they did uh, mix that up as well. Okay, so our next question is going to be from Morg Wolf. Sorry if you already answered it, but I'd be interested to know what you think about Faye lifespan and trajectory. For me, I honestly thought the game was a bit in a bit of a downturn. Uh, stale cancer metas that were too complex for the average player. Rearmed heroes feel like a shot of life back into the game. Basically saying, okay, if you spend your orbs, you not only get a character, but for just one inheritance of Dragon's Wrath 4, you can now inherit multiple times in terms of value. That's pretty insane especially in the prospect of spending money on orbs. We made it five years and I feel like I'll see- Yeah, summoning! I feel like I can't stop summoning now. I'm addicted to summoning. I, I, when you have this good of luck, how do you stop, right? Like, oh my gosh, I don't want to stop. The merges. Uh, okay, we're keep going. This is so bad, I'm gonna, I'm gonna regret this. But yeah, so uh, they expected to see us on the 10th anniversary. So for me, I feel like the honest truth is that Fire Emblem Heroes just makes a ton of money. Like, so much more money. Like, even than normal Fire Emblem games, right? So I don't think it's going to be going anywhere anytime soon. There's Flora. Okay. I'm going to be honest. I'm not, like, the biggest Flora fan. So I'll probably just use her as, like, attack for solo water. But I guess that's cool. I wish you were Brave Roy, though. If you are Brave Roy, I'd be, like, crying tears of joy. Um, but yeah, so I don't think it's going to go anywhere because it makes so much money. Um, and as much as I like to complain about like the game needing new game modes or meta shakeups or something like that, the truth is that I'd say like 80% of the player base of Fire Emblem Heroes is very, very casual. They probably don't even play Summoner Duels or Aether Raids. Uh, they, they, you know, they play Fire Emblem Heroes for their favorite characters. And there's nothing wrong with that. I play Fire Emblem Heroes for my favorite characters as well. So I feel like as long as they continue to release uh, new versions of popular characters, of people's favorite characters. People will continue to play and collect these characters, right? So as long as they do that, and then, you know, every once in a while, every year or two, they release a new Fire Emblem Heroes game, or new Fire Emblem game to, like, add in new characters and stuff, people are going to keep playing this game, right? And uh, it will probably continue to still make money. And as long as it's making, you know, even a fraction as much money as it is now, I don't see this game going anywhere. So I'm, I'm pretty positive with... Uh, the length of this game, like the lifespan of it at least. And the trajectory, I don't know. Uh, we've gotten a lot of power creep, and I'm not sure like what they're going to do with game modes essentially, but I'm going to continue playing. I, I do enjoy this game a lot, and I don't really plan to quit anytime soon. Okay, our next one's going to be from Toaz Kanuva. I'm really sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, do you think there will be a proper Fire Emblem Heroes crossover uh, example, Zelda, Kid Icarus, oh my god, I'd love Kid Icarus, uh, Xenoblade, what would you like to see? I would like to see Zelda and Kid Icarus and Final Fantasy. Like, that would make me super, super happy. Monster Hunter, oh my gosh, I'd be so happy. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever get a proper crossover. I think if we were going to get one, we would have gotten it by now. I think the best chance of getting one was when Dragalia Lost uh, had the Fire Emblem Heroes crossover, right? Because it wasn't a Fire Emblem crossover. It was a Fire Emblem Heroes crossover, right? Veronica was there. Fjorm was there. So I feel like if they were going to do it, they would have done it then, right? So I, I, I don't really see them doing that in the future. Maybe if, like, the game starts doing really bad, they'll start, like, releasing popular Nintendo characters on this game. But I kind of just don't see it at this point. But, you know, I would love to be wrong. Okay, our next question is going to be from Rocket Gal, another Faytuber. She makes really fun content. I've been watching all her videos and like, I don't think there's a single video I haven't laughed at. Like there's always, oh my god, we got another Eleni. Thank you, Rocket Gal. Thank you for all the luck. Holy shit. What is this? This is the craziest summoning session ever. I haven't had a summoning session like this in like years, literally years. I just don't want to stop. When you're, when you're getting a, a five star every 20 orbs, like, why would you want to stop? 
Okay, but yeah, Rocket Gal wants to do some Halloween questions, which is perfect. It's like very festive right now. Halloween is technically today, I think. Yeah, today. Um, so they want to know Snickers or Milky Way. I I am a Snickers person. I like Snickers way better than Milky Way. I've never been a big fan of Milky Way. They're not terrible, but they're not they're not my my go to ever. I don't think I've ever bought a Milky Way. Uh, then we have we have Reese's cups versus Reese's pieces. So Reese's pieces are good, but Reese's cups are like god tier candy. Like that's some of the best candy that's ever been made, ever. Whoever thought of putting peanut butter and chocolate together in that ratio is a genius. Like, I can't buy Reese's Cups because I'll just eat them all. And then I'll be like, okay, you just ate like fucking like 10 Reese's Cups. Like, you're going to be sick now. <laughs> so, uh, definitely Reese's Cups. And then Skittles or Starburst. This one's actually kind of hard. I like Skittles and Starburst. I think they're both really good. I think I like Skittles a little bit more. They're kind of like easier to just kind of like, you know, eat while you're doing something. While like Starburst, you kind of have to pay attention to them because you have to unwrap them. So I'm going to go with Skittles. And then we have Dum Dums or Blow Pops. Definitely Blow Pops, right? Like, Blow Pops are just better. Like, they taste better, first of all. And then you get gum as well. So, like, after you're done, you know, chewing it, like, there's gum there. So, like, it's like a double win, pretty much, in my opinion. And then lastly, Candy Corn or Dirt. <laughs> so, uh, this one's a little bit harder, right? Like, they both taste about the same. But I think I'll go with Candy Corn, just because I feel like I have a less chance of breaking a tooth while I'm chewing on the Candy Corn. That might be wrong, right? But, you know... I've seen people bite into candy corn and have some bad experiences, so we'll never know. But uh, I'm, I'm gonna go with candy corn. I'm gonna go with candy corn. Thanks, thanks for the question, Rocket Gal. <laughs> Guess we go blue here. It's, it's kind of weird because I feel like blue's so bad, but I don't actually have Est. So like, if I got her, then it's like flying flowers, which is like decent. There's Nelly. Our next question is gonna be from BTU. Uh, one, am I delusional for wanting another Rolf, uh, Rolf alt? One with a PRF, please. I'm begging you, IS. Yeah, I don't blame you. I would honestly take any Tellius character at this point, except for Makalov. Like, any other Tellius character I would take. Because, like, it's, they, they just treat Tellius so bad. And I know that I'm, like, obviously a hardcore Tellius fan, so maybe that's why I see things like that. But, like, I just feel like the fact that we haven't gotten a Radiant Dawn banner in, like, three and a half years is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like, why... Do they just not like it? <laughs> Why do they not like Tellius? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Let's go! Another Arvel. We are doing so good. Like, I don't even feel bad about spending 500 orbs when you're getting this many 5 stars. Plus defense? I don't know if I'd ever use that IV, but maybe. Um, and then their next question is, with the inclusion of rearmed and ascended heroes, do you think new heroes banners have as much value uh, or even more value than legendary mythic and seasonal banners? I think it's fair to say that seasonal and legendary mythic banners have had more value in the past, but now with the Senate and rearms, I think it's fair to say they are just as valuable as seasonal mythic banners. Uh, it's really difficult to say, I'd say. The value of new heroes banners has drastically increased, like absolutely, I don't think there's anybody to deny that. Uh, the value of getting a Florette and a rearmed hero is really, really big, but when you compare it to like a legendary and mythic banner, the, the values aren't the same, I would say, right? The value of a legendary and mythic banner is the merges right the merges directly increase your score in arena and uh ether raids up right while the value you get from a new heroes banner is very different now it's not about scoring it's about like um you know a florette giving you those extra stats which is just kind of nice to be honest but like the rearmed heroes is really where it's at in my opinion because you're not only are you getting a very powerful weapon to inherit but you're also getting like a bank essentially like a, an inheritance bank Let's go. Oh my god, another arc. Holy shit. What is this? I, I, I gotta keep going. I can't stop. There's no way I can stop with this kind of luck. When, when you're winning, you don't stop. Plus resistance. Yes, that's a very good idea. They have a super rune. But yeah, like, uh, rearmed heroes are like essentially like inheritance banks, right? Like, you can just put inheritance on them and then they can just give it out, right? Which is really, really good. So, like, um, I think that they both have. Holy shit. Holy shit. I don't know what else to say. What other curse words can I use to explain my shock and awe? Wow. That's also a really good IV. I'm going to have a hard choice going between attack and res. Wow. Oh my god. Holy fuck. Oh my god. Thank you for the luck, everybody. Everybody who submitted a question, thank you so much. Even if I didn't get to your question, like, thank you so much. 
Wow. But yeah, I, I think that, you know, I think there is a ton of value there now. I think new heroes banners are definitely worth a lot of the orbs that you're going to be putting into them. You're just guaranteed so much value with the spark. The possible chance of ascended, possible chance of rearmed hero. I just think it's a different type of value, pretty much. Okay, let's do another question. This one's going to be from Dante Franks. Who is your least favorite plus 10 character you've built, or maybe the one you regret the most? Uh, so first I'll answer for the plus 10. Uh, that probably goes to Yen Fei. Uh, I hate Yen Fei. Like, I, <laughs> I got so much like swept up into like the Yen Fei is going to help me with my arena score like hype. And this unit just does nothing. Like, First of all, they're bad in combat. I cannot get this unit to do anything in arena, right? Because in arena, you're fighting all plus 10s typically. At least where I'm at in arena. So he just can't compete. He just gets steamrolled, which is really bad. And I waste like a ton of good fodder on him. A ton of grails, obviously. Right, and I, he doesn't even score well enough where I can use him to stay in tier 21. I have to use my duos, my merge up duos. Because like the arena inflation has been so stupidly insane nowadays. The other character I will mention is I have a plus 9 Summer Leo, so almost plus 10. Um, I accidentally merged them up when I was trying to get Legendary Ike on my first Whale Banner ever. And I just hate like Summer Leo. And it's not because it's Leo, right? It's not that at all. It's just that every time I see Summer Leo, I remember how bad my luck was. And I spent like 2400 orbs. And then the worst part is that I hate myself for being so impatient. Because if I had waited one more month, I shared with Zelgius, and I could have had like a plus nine Zelgius instead of plus nine Summer Leo. So I'm, I'm I don't know. Every time I see that character, I, make, I get a little bit angry. <laughs> Every time it's in my barracks. Okay. There's a Merlinus. Let's do another question. This one's gonna be from another Fate Tuber. It's gonna be Connor Zach. Connor Zach does a lot of fun um, Summoner Duel streams. That's usually what content I catch from him and he wants to know which fade tubers do you think you could win in a fight so I think he's talking about a fist fight I'm guessing and uh, it's a really hard question right because I think all the fade tubers are kind of badasses right like you got pretty pretty has like the like toddler muscles like you cannot underestimate uh, underestimate a mom who has to carry around their toddler like they are actually buff no matter what they look like they are buff you just don't know it so I think pretty can kick my ass probably right uh, Promise is like a warrior of light, so she can probably kick my ass. Uh, Joel is like super Chad, like like ripped, you know, giant guy. So yes, ask her. Um, so Joel could probably kick my ass, right? Uh, Phoenix Master like can blow my brain up with like a Death Note or something. Um, so like you know, it's gonna be pretty hard. I think there's only like one Fade Tuber I could really beat in a fight for sure, and that's Connor Zack, of course, right? Like you know, I think that's just the obvious one. Connor Zack would just get you know knocked out probably like one hit so i think that's definitely the one person i could beat in a fist fight but yeah thanks for the question uh let's keep going our next one is gonna be from another fate tuber and a friend a big friend of the channel definitely check out dtm's channel i you know i do collabs with them constantly i'm talking to them literally every single day uh definitely one of my best fate tuber friends and they want to know sending you the best of luck i have received the luck thank you dtm my question is, what are you currently aiming for, or what are your goals currently in Fire Emblem Heroes? <laughs> um, so, I don't really know, to be honest. Like, before it was always hitting rank 1. I've hit rank 1 in pretty much every single game mode now. I think, like, I haven't hit it in, like, Voting Gauntlet. I got, like, rank 14, which was pretty close, so... And it doesn't really matter, to be honest. So, like, when it comes to competition, there's not really many goals. Um, when it comes to merge projects, I definitely have some goals. I would really like to finish off my Ascended Joshua. I would like to finish off Brave Marianne. And also like my older, old, old projects like Brave Roy, I've never been able to finish. So I would love to finish with that. I think that would be a lot of fun. Other than that, most of my goals when it comes to Fire Emblem Heroes is just content. Like I want to put out really good videos, right? I want to make sure that I'm entertaining people. People are having fun. Holy fuck. Thank you, DTM. The Elamine look. Oh my god. I don't even know how many I have anymore. I've lost track. I have lost track. This is the best summoning session ever. Thank you so much, everybody. Holy shit. But yeah, so I mean, my goal has just been to like make the best videos possible, right? I really want to grow the channel. I really want to be able to put out information that's not only valuable to people, but entertaining. I want people to be laughing at my videos. I want people to be like, you know, wanting to partake in the community. Because I feel like one of the things that Faye is missing in game like not in total but just in the game is community right there's no way to really reach out to other players in game you have to go through reddit you have to go through youtube you have to go through discord right and so if i can act as a bridge 
for people to start talking and having fun together, I think that's the best thing I really want to do, right? Because I think that's like the most fun I have with video games. Like any game I've ever played, the, the community, the friends you make is always what makes the game better. It's not the content, it's not the like system designs, it's the people. So I guess that's like the only real goal I have when it comes to Fire Emblem Heroes. So I don't know if that's like a very good answer, but that's what I'm going to go with. That's what I'm going to go with. Uh, we're on a, a Faye Tuber uh, roll, so let's keep going. So this one's going to be from Levin Seti, another, another big friend. Love talking to Levin Seti about all kinds of stuff, uh, including the meta and just like other games as well. And Levin wants to know, if you were a character in a cheesy Friends Hanging Out sitcom, I would love that. That'd be amazing. Uh, during your piece of the opening credits, what silly activity would you be doing? Uh, that's really easy, right? So you know how like there's always the character who is like, like falls or hurts himself in some funny way and everybody's laughing or like smiling like oh man did you see what's his name just do that i would be that character so like like if we're talking about friends like i would be the one falling in the fountain right like 100 percent. like that would just be me so yeah <laughs> any way i could hurt myself that's that's what i would be doing in the opening like uh scene for sure <laughs> thanks for that question that's a pretty funny one um we got another question from Squadala, and Squadala wants to know, when it comes to saving orbs, how do you stop yourself from emptying the coffers for that shiny new toy? So Squadala, I'm going to uh, have to break it to you. This is going to be a little bit hard to say, but um, I don't. I just don't. You know, I just break out the wallet. I get the credit card. Uh, we charge up some orbs, and we just summon. We summon a lot. As you may have noticed, uh, we're like probably like 40 or 50 minutes into this video <laughs> of me just summoning on this new banner. So... Uh, I'm definitely not the person who uh, ever has self-control. I think you'd probably be better talking off to like, to like DTM or somebody who's like free to play because I am terrible at it. Okay, let's keep with the questions going. The questions have been bringing a ton of luck. Let's do one from Professor Toad. Professor Toad, uh, what Lagoose Royal do you choose in Path of, Radi uh, Path of Radiance fi Finale? So in Path of Radiance Finale, you essentially get to like the last chapter and then you get to choose like between Tibur, Nysala, and Gifka, I believe. And I've played the game enough where I've, I've done all of them, right? But like, you know, my favorite for sure is Tibur. I love using Tibur in that final chapter. He like just feels so strong and powerful. And like Tibur is just such a badass. I really, really enjoy Tibur as a character. Uh, that's why I really felt bad when I had to like pretty much fodder him off for Sturdy Impact when he first came out. Oh, we're almost out of orbs. Oh, should I stop? What, what, where are we at? Uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, I, I pretty much always choose Tiburn. Uh, after that, yeah. So I think that's like pretty much who I always pick. Even in like Radiant Dawn, when you get to the end of the game and you have to choose like your units to go into the tower, I always choose Tiburn. Like, absolutely. We are down to 10 orbs. I should not be summoning anymore, but I'm going to go in again. There's a the colorless. We're at 9%. I mean, like... It doesn't even matter. This 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 summoning session has been just stupidly good, so <laughs> I don't even care. I would like to get like just one more five star I guess to end it on, but I don't really know. I guess I could buy more orbs. I don't even care to be honest. Like it's not even that big a deal. Okay. We're gonna do one final encore summoning session. Try to break this pity. We'll stop at the next five star no matter what. Uh, I'm gonna try to get the last couple questions I have set up done, but who knows what will happen. So this one's gonna be from Twisted Lukey. What is a character you want in the game that has almost no chance to get in? I want dice so much, my man has no recognition, and he can't even rely on Malice now. What is your favorite fighting game? I'm not a huge fan of them myself, but Soul Calibur is my favorite since childhood. Uh, so when it comes to characters, I would say Dart. I think Dart had a good chance when the Pirate Banner existed, but now the Pirate Banner is gone. I'm kind of like nervous if Dart will ever get in. And the reason why I really want Dart is because I really like the pirate animation, right? The pirate animation is badass. And so I was hoping Dart would like bring it, but then I'm kind of like nervous he won't get in now. When it comes to fighting games, the only fighting game I really play is Smash Brothers, right? Like it's not really a traditional fighting game, but I really, really enjoy it. I think a lot of other people do, obviously, right? It has all the Fire Emblem characters in it. It has Cloud and Sephiroth. Like, there's just, it's just amazing, right? Uh, when it comes to other fighting games, more traditional ones, the only one I really play was Soul Calibur 2. Uh, back on the GameCube, and the reason for that was because Link was in it, and uh, <laughs> I think without Link being in that game, I probably would have not played it at all, but because Link was in it, I played it a ton. 
but I really haven't touched many other fighting games outside of Smash or like Soul Calibur 2, essentially. Keep going. This will be from uh, Agilot 3. But being Halloween, I also want to know if you're going to dress up of something on Halloween and go out with your friends. Uh, I'm not going to do that on Halloween. I went out yesterday night. That's why I was so tired and also why my um, <laughs> my Arvo reaction was so late. Because I was out with my friends and I got home and like, pretty much stayed up all night to get that video up. So I'm not going to really do anything, I don't think. I'm probably just going to chill. But um, I've never been like super into Halloween, right? I don't really dress up for Halloween. My parents were like really strict as a kid about it. So like when I got into high school, like my tradition in Halloween was essentially like get super drunk and then like hand out candy to kids. I don't think I'm going to do that this year, but like that's typically what I do on Halloween. We usually have a party with some friends, get super drunk and have, like, have a good time. I'm not getting any colorless orbs now. And our pity's going up. Which, I, I, you know, I'm not going to complain. This summoning session was absolutely insane. But I would like to just to break the pity, obviously. So I'll have to, like, <laughs> look at it. There's base Erica. So our last question is going to be from DeBrench. Who would you consider to be the most underrated units in the game right now? Could be for any game mode you'd like. Uh, it's really hard to say who's underrated, right? Um, I'm going to say Altina. Everybody knows that I'm an Altina stan. I think people like completely dumpster on Altina all the time, talk about how terrible she is and stuff. But I think Altina is just like secretly one of the best units in the game. She has, you know, a distant counter dual phase brave weapon. And her special is one of the only melee specials. Like it's the only melee special that can pierce damage reduction, right? We have legendary Nana, but that's not on a special that's on her weapon. Oh, there's Elamine. That is a plus 10 Elamine now. We are done. Elamine is plus 10. We don't even have to summon for her again when she comes back. Even though <laughs> I kind of do want the other heroes on that chair, I don't even care. This is amazing. Oh my god. We actually got a plus 10 Elamine. Um, yeah, let's finish this question. And we can... Wow, this summoning session. Holy crap. Um, but yeah, so like Al Altina's one. Another one that I think people might agree with more <laughs> is um, the, both the Nyla. <sighs> what the fuck? I don't even need this one. Uh, we're at plus 11 alt uh, Elamine now. I, I, can't, I can't breathe. What is going on? What do I do with this? Oh, she has Far Trace. I could use the Far Trace fodder for like Alencia maybe? Like speed defense is better, but I don't have speed defense. So I don't have words anymore. I don't know how to explain myself. This has just been the best summoning session ever. Thank you so much, everybody. But yeah, I think Nihilus, I think both the Nihilus are super underrated. Uh, they're very, very powerful. They, they just have stupid busted weapons. Infantry Beasts are just have the best transformation probably. In my, like Armors are close, but infantry are insane. And then another, you know, like Flame Moose Bell. Uh, I think I underrated him on my tier list. I would definitely put him up higher now that I've used him. He just pumps out so much damage and he's so difficult to deal with. So probably like those are probably like the most underrated units in my opinion. There's a lot more, but those are the ones that are on top of my head. Uh, this summoning session was probably the most insane summoning session I've had in two or three years, I'd say. Uh, it's probably since I've plus 10 Altina. That was a very insane summoning session as well. I can't really even explain. This is the best summoning session ever. This is one of the most insane summoning sessions ever. And I just really want to thank everybody who stuck through this video and watched all of it. And for asking all those great questions. They brought a ton of luck. Thank you so much. Now I'd love to hear from you. How did your summoning session go if you did summon on this banner? Were you able to get Arvo if that's who you're going after? Or maybe you were going after Asker and Elamine, who are also really excellent units. If not, what are you saving for? There's so much stuff coming up. Possibly a ninja banner, possibly something completely new. And then also obviously the new book banner coming up in about a month, maybe a month and a half around there. I'd just love to hear from you. So make sure to drop a comment down below letting me know how your summoning session went. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe. It will make sure that you see all my newest videos from the biggest fate updates to showcases, the tier list, and of course, all my summoning sessions. This has been Oblivion and I'll catch you all later with more Fathom Heroes.